We're going to talk about something else this morning. We're going to talk about renovation loans. And the purpose of this is that I want to give you some information about renovation loans to let you know that there are different types, what to expect. But really, the purpose of this is not so that people go out and get a renovation loan. And you'll understand why in a moment. But that you and I have got it as a tool to use so that we can explain with some level of understanding to bring confidence to our buyer that we know everything that's out there. So we can pull them in to become our client, your client, my client. And you'll see why when I get to the timing, why these loans, although they're there, as Jeff asked me when I came in, they're there, but they're not being heavily utilized. So let's start at the, start at the beginning. There, Conventional has a renovation loan. It's by Fannie Mae. It's called Home Style. Uh, very simple. It's, and it, to go into all the parameters are unnecessary, but you know, Home Style. It's a good loan. Um, we'll talk about some of the details on it in a minute. FHA has the famous, and it's been around forever, as long as I've been in the business, called 203K. Now, there's two different types of 203K loans. There's limited and there's standard. The limited means that the project is going to cost under $50,000. And usually what I do is I use a guideline of about 40 to 43,000. And the reason why is that all of these loans put something in called a contingency. So I can't go over 50,000, so if I stay at 40, I throw in a contingency of five, maybe $7,000, I'm still under the 50. If I go over 50 on FHA, then I'm gonna go to what's called the standard. Now the standard is the big difference between limited and standard, one, the 50,000 limit, but the other one, if you go to a standard 203K product, that's when you have to, your client has to hire what's called an FHA 203K consultant. And they'll hire a consultant, and the consultant is going to walk the whole project from beginning to end. So it's not that it's a bad thing, but it has an extra cost to it, and takes a lot longer. Because now it's not just going through the other steps I'm going to talk about. Out of curiosity, has anybody done either of these two products? Bill, you have? Jeff, you have? Casey has? Jasleen has? How long ago? Uh, 2020, we moved in. So we bought the house in 2019. Okay, and then you did one. Did you do this or this? Oh, yeah, I, like, I personal did. The standard. Standard. FHA standard. Or, I mean, the 2031. 203. 203K standard? standard? Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the time frame, out of curiosity, from contract to close? Well, we were still working on design, so we, they started construction in probably October, and we closed on the loan, or closed, I mean, we closed on it. Um, they finished the work in... But how long before you actually closed on the loan from the time that you uh, started the application? Um, just a few months. Okay, a few months, okay. Two to three months, that's about normal. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Jeff, you've done, how, what's your time frame? It was typically about 45 days for the limited. Okay. Jasleen, you've done one? 90 days. 90 days. Okay. So the timing on this we'll get to in a moment, all right? So here's the steps in the process. So there are three approvals necessary on either one of these. Three approvals that has to be done by the lender. Obviously, the easy one, we got to approve the borrower. That's the easy one because we're approving them anyway, right? Okay. Next, we have to approve the contractor. Now, here's the significance. Significance is not that the lender has to approve the contractor. Significance is the borrower has to get a contractor. Now, how is unless you are in that business, know somebody, do you know, this is not an easy task today. Because contractors, if they're good, are busy. So it takes a while to identify a contractor. Then it can't be your neighbor's brother's son 
who started doing, re who started doing repair work a few months ago. It's got to be somebody that has all the licenses, the bonding, the insurance, whatever they're going to have, because we are going to approve that contractor. Somebody says, well, I want to do some of the work myself. Okay, I'm not going to tell you that you can't, but what I'm going to tell you is your general contractor is the one that's liable for the work that's being done. So if you're going to do the painting, or if you're going to do any of the work, then you have to clear it with your contractor, not with me, with the contractor that they're the one that we are going to hold accountable for the work that you are going to do. And some contractors don't want to do that. If it's painting, it may not be a big deal. Now, home style is more lenient on that than 203K. But we've got to approve the contractor. Now, the next thing is we have to approve the plans and specs. Now, when I say plans and specs, the plan is you have to tell the contractor and us what work do you want done at the house. Well, I want to rip out all the cabinets in the kitchen because they're, they're old and they're really falling apart. Okay, that's one, so that's part of the plan. Next plan is the front porch needs to be redone. Okay, so we're going to redo the front porch. All right, that becomes part of the plan. Whatever work you're going to do in that house becomes part of the plan. Now you go back to your contractor and say, here's what we want to do. You have to tell us how much this is going to cost and how long it's going to take. Now, many people, many people, they don't want to go to just one contractor. They're going to get their plans and specs, assuming, or they're going to get their plans together, and they're going to take it to one, two, or three contractors in some cases and say, tell me how much this is going to cost, the specifications. This is what you're going to do, how much is it going to cost. Then they go ahead and they pick a contractor, at which point we now have to approve the contractor. We take the plans and specs. Now we're going to approve the plans and specs. Now, can anybody see why this doesn't happen in 30 days? This is going to take time. Now, let's assume for a moment borrower, contractor, plans, and specs are all taken care of. Then as we're doing that, we have to order, we order an appraisal. From an, we order an appraisal from one appraiser, but that appraiser is going to do two appraisals. He's going to do an as-is, and they're going to do a what it'll be like after the work is done. And based on that second one, that's what's going to determine if, we're going to, if it's going to meet the loan-to-value guidelines. Now, the loan-to-value guidelines are a little bit loosey-goosey on these two products, which is a good thing. But bear in mind, we're going to be doing two appraisals. Now, that should trigger a thought in all of our minds. Cost. This is not free. Yes, Herbert? Uh, just to be, um, so I can be on the right foot. The limited is how much? This is up to 50000 And the standard? And, as long as it's over fifty, You can basically, I've never, I've never seen anything coming in over 150 but I guess you probably could. So is this prior to the buyer, uh, he's already approved for the home. Uh, so in addition, say, well, I, well, I want to, uh, I want to apply for a home style loan mm -hmm. in addition to what you already approved. Then, well, then we have to reapprove them. You, you have to reapprove. Them. That's right. We have, if they're going to do home style, we have to approve them for the work that they're going to do for the total work. Oh, so that's in addition to. That's right. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Timing. Forty-five to sixty days for home style, and again. Some of that is going to be loosey-goosey based on how long it takes to get these two things. If it's a small project, you're only going to spend $15,000. you got a contractor to come in and do it. It, it. It's possible it could come in less than 45 days, but you're still going to be in that window. The more complicated it gets, the longer it's going to go out. It's just going to take time to do it. Jeff. 
I remember it used to be uh, the minimum was five thousand dollars. It is five thousand. Is it on five on all? Yes, on all. Yes, it is. Minimum five thousand. Yeah, can't be less than that. Now. This all sounds good, and the reason I present this is so one, that you know it exists, two, that at least you have some parameters, but number three, the probability that you're gonna do this in the next six months is very, very minimal, and here's why. First of all, it takes, let's say, 60 to 90 days to get, this, get one of these done in a typical environment, at least 45 days, maybe longer. How many sellers right now do you have that are willing to sit with a contract and wait 60 days before they're going to close? It's just, it's almost impossible to find. Now, there are situations where you might find somebody that would say, I'd be willing to wait. They're selling a house for $200,000. It needs about $50,000 of work. You come in with a contract, say, yeah, we're gonna take that. We'll do it in 60 days. What's the competition? Shorter. What's that? Shorter, but what, but what, who is your competition? You got a home for $200,000 and needs $50,000 of repair. What's that? Cash buyer. Cash buyer. Your investor. So that's why this product, as good as it is, and it's excellent, isn't being utilized. Because if you can find something that is that would fit in this here, you're gonna be messing around with somebody who is a cash buyer, an investor. And if Rip is the seller, and Jeff and I both present offers, Jeff presents a cash offer, says close 14 days, I come in with this great program, I'm gonna do all this stuff to the house, but I need to close in about 60 days. Rip, what are you gonna do? Cash. cash. It's just, that's what's going to happen. Therefore, this product today is good to know about, but it's probably not going to be used. So if it's not going to be used, why do we need to know about it? We need to know about it for what we talked about before we actually started the session while some of you were in here. Competition. You're faced with competition because you're not the only real estate agent calling on that particular person in many cases. There, Jeff? I didn't mean to cut you off, but my question is, has to do with the easy buy. So a conventional home style, if, can you turn me into a cash buyer and I utilize the conventional home style for a easy buy program? Ah, Jeff, excellent. I was gonna get to that, but you brought it up, let's do that. That is the way you can make this program into benefiting for your client. Easy buy, easy buy will take this. But here's the biggest challenge. Easy buy needs me, as you know from Wednesday's presentation, they need me to approve what we're doing. What does that mean? I've got to approve the borrower, I've got to approve the contractor, I've got to approve the plans and specs. So instead of me giving an approval in a matter of hours or a day, maybe two, now all of a sudden this is going to be stretched out for whatever period of time it's going to take for the buyer to make this determination. But if they do that, one second, Casey, if they do that, then yes, Easy Buy will allow us, they'll buy the property, then you can go in and do the work because we've approved it. Okay, Casey? Casey, I, I honestly, it's so hard for me to give a time frame because it's all based on this. And some contractors can do that in a week. Some contractors, it takes three to four weeks. It, it's all up in the air. So easy, easy buy, okay? They will go ahead and, and purchase the, the property assets with the assets appraisal mm -hmm. uh, within those 14 days. Yes. And then we go to FHA uh, 
loan and, and do the FHA, loan. you cannot do FHA on easy buy. Okay, conventional. You, you go mm -hmm. to Homestyle and then do they deposit the funds for the construction? How, 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 how it will work? Like to step in, you know, uh, the yes, that's a good question. Easy Buy is going to be funding it because we're going to fund it behind the scenes for them. Okay? okay? We're going to fund it behind the scenes. Okay. So, Rip. Okay. So, a couple of questions. The flip side of Casey's question, like, I've got a guy for pretty much everything. So, if I have my guys lined up, contractors over there within a couple of days of uh, contract, all that, and we move as fast as we can, there's not a minimum, it has to be 45. Days. Oh, no, 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 okay. no. We can turn it. I mean, our underwriting, the way that, at least in our case, our underwriting, you know, the borrower's the simple one. We do that pretty quick. But we've got to get these two, and this takes anywhere from, depends on, the comp, on how complicated the transaction is, but this could take anywhere from two to five days. Okay. And but then it's going off of her question with the easy buy, you know, when we do easy buy, we don't have to put an appraisal contingency, but we are liable for low appraisal. With this one having two appraisals, how does that work with closing on easy buy? Because I'm assuming you're still closing on the higher price. You are. So that then you're getting paid out for that. That is correct. But is there a... So there's no appraisal when everything's done. There's just an appraisal of this is the ARV. We're going to be doing it. That's right. We're going to be doing that up front. Okay. Now, I have Everything to tell you. Everything hinges on that final appraisal. That's right. Everything hinges on that. I have not done this program with Easy Buy. Mm -hmm. I've gone over it with Kara and Stephen to know that you can do it, but the particulars, if anybody does have me doing that, it's going to take Kara, Stephen, and myself maybe a day to get it ironed out to make sure we're doing it exactly correct. All right. Now, again, this here, in my opinion, in most cases is going to be for you and I to be able to talk about with some level of understanding so that we can secure that client to be your client and my client, because the probability is once they see all of this, it, I mean, I, I get every week I get calls on this. And I'm not doing any of them because they don't want to go through it. And they're also finding they can't meet the time frames because time frames are ridiculous when you're trying to work with a seller. Now, last piece of this, this is not free. There's higher costs involved. I don't care who the lender is because interest rates by Fannie Mae and, and FHA are higher. Usually this is three-eighths higher. Usually this is about five-eighths higher than normal market rates. Plus, in our case, we do charge a 1% origination fee on both products, which we typically don't do on conventional loans and typically don't do on FHA, but we do on the renovation product. And that's very common. So that's some... 1% origination? What's that? 1% origination. origination, yes. And it's very common. So I'm telling you, that's what we do. I'm also, that's very common in the marketplace, but doesn't mean every lender is doing that. So there's higher cost involved. So not only does it take longer, but then the people have to stomach a higher cost. And by the time they get through all that, they're like, do I really want to do this? And if they can find the right house, and if it's not going to be a super competitive situation, then maybe this would be for them. Does Not that? To mention the carry cost for easy buy. Uh, yeah, and you still have the carrying cost for easy buy during that time. Any other? Like the worst thing in the world. No, it's not. Compared to a mortgage, right. there is a little bit worse. Right, it's not. It's not the worst. I think you have to have the conversation with your clients up front asking them if they're interested in any type of renovation you know, if, if you guys have the discussion and they're interested in possibly looking at something in that situation, that you go ahead and start researching your contractors and getting ideas of contractors, so that way that that piece of the puzzle is already taken care of. Sure. Herbert? But uh, as I understand it, uh, 
you don't approve as is homes, do you? Uh, if some home say as is, once you read what the as is really is saying. All we're looking at the as is to make sure that the that the collateral is what the starting point is. That's all we're doing is making sure that the collateral is at the starting point that it is. If you're selling it for two hundred thousand dollars, but the marketplace says that home in this market should only be one sixty, we're not doing that loan. Right. It doesn't make any difference what you're going to do to it. It's not we're not going to do the loan because the starting point is in the hole by forty thousand dollars in this example. But if it adds in and it still comes to the standard. What two hundred thousand now? Then, then, then you look at it a little bit different. Well, the end point you have to have it. You have to have it start because again, what happens if that house? What happens if they default on that in some way? They default on it up front. If they if they default on that in some way up front, the lender wants to make sure they've got the collateral meets the price that it's supposed to be at. So that's why we have to do two appraisals. All right, I'm running a little bit long. Thank you, everybody. If you have other questions, just let me know. Appreciate it.